everyone. This is Rob Golfie with Remax, the Golfie team. Welcome to the Golfie Real Estate Show, Hamilton Edition with host Rick Zamprin. Another amazing Saturday is here, and it is always great to spend it with Mr. Rob Golfie, sales representative, Remax's Scarman Realty, the Golfie team, online at robgolfie.com. That's Rob, G O L F I.com. Call the number one Remax team in Canada. That is the Golfie team if you want to get your home sold or even market to buy a house, the number to call is 905-575-7700, 905-575-7700. A lot of interesting topics to uh, discuss today, including an event that you will definitely want to register for. It's called the Win in Any Market event. We'll talk a little more about it towards the end of the program. We're also going to get into home inspectors, and whether or not you should use the one that's recommended by your real estate agent. I'm sure Rob has some thoughts on that. We'll also talk about uh, municipal land transfer taxes, uh, Canadians gearing up, apparently, to enter the housing market again, which is exciting news. But to begin the day, as we usually do, what is happening in your real estate life this week, Mr. Dalty? Yeah, so, um, yeah, the market it has changed. There's no doubt about it. Uh, inventory is moving up because uh, uh, we're finding that months of inventory <laughs> is climbing and surprisingly, surprisingly climbing. So... It's telling me that uh, coming up in uh, probably November, December, opportunity is out there for the buyers. I would gear up, and even though the interest rates are not the greatest, and they may do an increase in October, it's hard to tell. Uh, but even if they do, do not be afraid. Right now, even myself, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with some of, some of the renewals. Like, do I just... Uh, renew at a uh, one year open and and pay the higher interest rate and just do the short short uh, short term pain or or do I renew at a lower interest rate for five years and do I uh, roll a dice and say oh wow I should have waited the one, one year but it's hard to tell but I'm lo I'm looking at that as many as other people are also but um but but the thing is opportunity is 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 uh starting to happen right now um people are putting you know aggressive offers on homes and sellers are realizing you know what they have to probably uh you know give in a little bit if they want the house sold it just depends on the seller and the seller's motiva motivation um we just sold uh, uh a three and a half million dollar house i was surprised cash offer and uh mm -hmm. it uh it was in grimsby and, you know, like I was surprised. I, I called my client. I said, hey, listen, we got a cash offer here. And usually when you get uh, homes that are, you know, in that price point, you, you, you're lucky if you get 10 people to see it in, in the course of four or five months. So uh, we did get a lot of people looking at it. But nobody, everybody hums and haws and thinks about it. It is a big price point, even for business people mm -hmm. that do well. Um, but, uh, but again, you know, we, we, we left a little room for negotiations cause we knew that was going to happen and, uh, we put the deal together and it sold. Uh, we just, we just sold it. Fantastic. My clients are happy. I'm happy. And, uh, and, uh, the buyer, the buyers are happy. And so is the agent. So everybody's all happy there, but again, opportunity is, is, uh, starting to happen right now for, uh, for the buyers and sellers. If you got a great, great house. That everything's done to the nines, you will get you will get a, a good price for your house. So given that we the, the market has now changed to a buyer's market, are buyers kind of dictating what the price point is? Because you alluded to it, you know, that some of the sellers have to give in a little. Yeah, you know what it is? It's it's difficult when you have a house that needs work, right? Like it needs a little bit of work here and there. And and I just sold one that did. And 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 you, I gotta tell you the story. So, uh, and this is one of my techniques and I was rolling the dice on this one, but I had no choice. Um, but if the house needs work, the, uh, buyers are coming in aggressive on the price. There's no doubt about it. So the, the story on this one was, um, we sold this house and this house needed repairs everywhere. Like the, the homeowner he started projects, but never finished them. It was just, it, it, it needed probably about 40, $50,000, a, a guy to go in that's including labor, just fixing everything up. Like there was no structural problems with the house. And, um, and he was, and the guy was a little bit tough to deal with too. Like the, the sell, the seller was a little tough. So, uh, a lot of pressure there from him. And, uh, so I get an offer and, uh, they came in, you know, pretty aggressive, but my seller was he was easy on the sign back. He was good. I go, okay, good. 
Um, I tell the agent, I go, look, listen, you know this house needs a lot of work. Don't come to me after home inspection and say, oh, we, uh, we want to renegotiate. I says, I, I don't want to hear that. I go, listen, this house, you need to put forty fifty thousand 50000 in. You understand that. We both agree. Boom. So anyway, on the last day of conditions, he comes to me and says, Rob, you know, we need another day. We want an, another day. Actually wanted another three, four days for the conditions. I says, no way. You, I'm not giving you another four days. I, I, I go, you, you, you. And I said, okay, I'll give you till tomorrow, right? And uh, he goes, that's going to be tough. I go, I don't care. I says, you know what? I told you. What are you getting the contractor for? Like, you, you, I told you. It's $40,000, $50,000. So anyway, uh, I call my client up and I talk to him and he says, um, he goes to me, he goes, uh, Rob, no way. I, th- this thing, get it, tell him either he wants it or he doesn't want it. And I go, okay. So I go back to him. <laughs> so I go back to, my, to the other agent. I said to, and I'm going, okay, how am I going to handle this? So I did tell him I had a few showings the next day. And, uh, and, uh, and had, uh, the showings weren't there. I had a few people interested. Agents called me if this deal falls apart. Right. But that doesn't mean anything. It just means that, you know. So uh, I, I go to the agent. I said, uh, just send me the mutual release. We want out of the deal. We, we're not going to hmm. give you time. You either firm up today, today, right now, within the next couple hours, or give us the mutual release. That's the way I put it. And I sent him, I got right. agents n- banging down on my door, wanting this property. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's, t- I, he's listening to this. And he's like, he can't believe me here saying this. Like, like I'm literally telling him, we don't want you. And, uh, please leave us alone. We'll, f- we'll give it to somebody right. else. And, and every time I played that card, I always put the deal together. He firmed up within an hour. And oh, wow. every, I'm telling you, Rick, every time I play that card and you know how that, that mentality starts, it starts when you're a little kid, a little boy, you know how there's two little boys and one's got the little fire engine truck and the other one wants it, right? Because the other little boy wants that fire engine truck also because that other boy has it. So as soon as the one boy doesn't care about it, the other boy doesn't care about it anymore. So basically... Yeah, so I just, so basically I just, like, I acted like we don't care. We, I was, and, and you have to be confident when you say this. This is a, a negotiation tactic. I hope the guy that's, uh, that we did this deal with uh, is not listening. <laughs> he's a realtor. <laughs> Hopefully he's not listening. But, uh, but, yeah. but anyway, but yeah, like I, I had, you know what? I, was, I had to come up with something because I, I thought this guy was going to walk away and I'm going to go, oh my, I have to start all over again with this house. But he firmed up. He firmed up. It is a solid house. And, and I use my uh, enthusiasm and, and my uh, techniques and my experience and we got the deal done and it's a firm deal. Yeah, and while it might be, you know, a tactic that you used and, and you've used in the past, you know, the fact of the matter is that there would be, uh, so it would just be a matter of time. There would be a number of other people who who would be banging down the door to say, "Hey, you know, this is you know a, a house that I want to get into." Yeah, we realize that the, you know forty to fifty k in renovations need to be done, but and and, and that's the opportunity for the next home buyer that that's going to realize that deal. So, yeah, the, the tactics have to be used to, oh, to get the deal done. Absolutely, because a lot of agents they try to renegotiate. And, and I'm sick and tired of that. Like they, you know, after the home inspection and, and you tell them what's wrong with the house and they still like come at you. And I'm just, you know what? Like, come on, be a, be a good agent and, and, and tell your client, Hey, it does need a lot of work. Are you still interested? Don't put the offer in. And, and, and like a lot of agents go in thinking they can renegotiate after the thing, after the deal's done. Right. Because they got the conditional period. And I like, it's just, it, and, and that's their tactic, right? And that's their tactic. And sometimes it backfires on them. And, and they do that knowing that going in, like they say, oh, we'll beat them up a little more on the price. But, um, and, you know, I just, I just don't like that. And, uh, you know, just if you know, if you know about showing houses and you know the, what needs to be done, and I always inform my clients, here's what your house needs. Here's what you have to do to the house to get it to the level. Furnace is old. Shingles are old. Uh, windows are old, you know, you have to put another 30,000 into, into the house to, to get it back to the level it should be at. Are you, are you okay with that? Let's, let's put the offer in based knowing that, that you may have to do that. And, and that's not a problem. And then when you do the home inspection, you're really doing the home inspection to find out if there's mold or there's structural problems. Anything outside of that, you pretty well know. 
and at the end of the day, you want you want a win, 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 right? A win for the home buyer, a win for the home seller, a win for both agents. So everyone is going away, you know, happy with the deal that that was compens- that was uh, consummated. Um, so there's no you know ill feelings. Uh, I would I would assume that it's very rare that someone is kind of like ah you know in full regret mode after the deal is done. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, so it just uh, yeah it worked out well. And uh, and 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 my seller was worried about this guy trying to renegotiate, and that's why I said no. You either take it tonight or or you lose it. You lose it. That's it. So so the agent realized that that tactic's not going to work for him. So then that's why uh, he firmed up. He says, you know, it's not going to happen. So it was good. It worked out well for for the uh, seller, and uh, and um, you know, he pushed me to uh, to get it done, and I got it done. Got about a minute before the segment uh, comes to a close, but I do want to uh, ask you, and we can continue this on in segment two about high the high end market is apparently still strong, but there are picky buyers out there? Yeah, high-end market is doing well. The negotiations are tough on those, right? Uh, especially, you know what? Especially if you go in with a, a cash offer and uh, no conditions, it's, you don't get those. You do not get those, and it's hard. Um, but the high-end market is, is, is good, but it is very picky. Uh, it's moving along. The people, the, the, the people that have money out there are, are the... the are the wealthy obviously they have the money but they're the ones that are uh you know they can pick and choose right now and uh and and and, and negotiate a, a pretty good deal but somehow high-end houses are selling and they're moving still to come on the show we'll talk about how some ontario landlords there's at least one i'm sure there's a, a few more than that that want you to share a bed with a stranger for 550 dollars a month rent we'll explain later on in the show you'll definitely want to tune in to that scenario. But let's talk about the apparent heating up of the housing market again. There was a recent survey done by Die and Durham Corp, a survey of 1,001 Canadians, and it found that one in 10 are looking to sell their home and buy something new within the next 12 months. That's double the number, by the way, of those who sold and bought new last year. And for first time home buyers, and this is interesting, first time home buyers' intentions have also increased with. intending to make the leap within the next year compared to just 4% who already purchased their first house this past year. So more people want to buy within the next 12 months and a lot more first-time homebuyers plan to get in. That seems encouraging, Rob. It it is. You know what? And I think it it, it is actually good for anybody getting into the market, especially if if the interest rates go up another, let's say, quarter point next, uh, next, well, in the next couple days, or I think the, uh, I'm not sure when the next announcement is, but if the interest rates go up, that's the time that you buy. And I know it's weird. uh, He's a realtor. He wants to say, you know, wants to make money and stuff like it's not that when interest rates go up, property values either hold or they they or they do get adjusted and and they come down a bit uh to readjustment that's when you go in you negotiate a hard deal as as a buyer now when the market when the interest rates drop and they eventually will um that's when the real estate market goes up so you picked up at a uh, you bought low and now you you sell high or you hold on and you built uh, some equity um, but I do feel the opportunity uh, for buyers are coming up, uh, and and it, we're talking it's just around the corner. I think November, December, if there's inventory out there, which it looks like there is inventory, um, the opportunities are going to be there for the buyers. And uh, yeah, I could see people moving and, and moving from one house to another. They can transport their mortgage or whatever, or blend their mortgage depending how big if they're upsizing or downsizing. But yep, opportunity is coming. Uh, for buyers and sellers, uh, clean up your house, make it look good, because it, it'll every penny is going to count when you guys are uh, buyers are coming in trying to negotiate against you. It's not all rose-colored glasses. This survey also shows that high interest rates are playing a part in people's decisions. Twenty-three percent say they are going to stay on the housing market sidelines until these interest rates fall. And who knows, they might be waiting for a while if they are waiting for that. 24% say they would not buy until home prices decline. And that, that's a bit of a rarity. You have to go back a long ways to see year-over-year declines uh, in house prices. Um, it sounds like those that, that group of people might be waiting a while. Yeah, it is. And then why, why wait till house uh, interest rates uh, drop? Uh, because that's when the housing prices are going to go up. So that, the mentality there is uh, the person's waiting. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to wait till interest rates drop. 
and uh, and they, then they'll buy. Well, then they're going to see notice that housing prices are going to go up. So and they're going to complain about that, and then they're going to wait again. And you know, it's just it's a vicious cycle. Um, but like I said, like November, December, remember last, I, I was telling you about last year, how the prices in, uh, I think December and January, they almost hit rock bottom in a lot of the markets in, uh, in the golden horseshoe. So the, so it was uh, like, you could have literally bought a house in December last year, close on it in February, March, and put it back up for sale and probably made a hundred grand without even doing a single thing to the house. Not one thing. Hmm. And, uh, so Will that happen again this year? I think I think there'll be opportunity, but it's hard to tell what the market's going to be next year. I, uh, like I'll tell you, Rick, I've been in this business for 25 years. I've not experienced any of this. Now I, I I know what the 90s were, and that's where interest rates went up and housing prices held on for a long time. They they didn't drop. They just held they just stopped and and it and it's and they held for a long time it wasn't like one or two years they they held for a good all, close to a decade like I, I was just looking at it and you have that chart in in 1999 or no 1990 the average sale price was 167,000 in 2000 it was 164,000 and it held in that 160,000 range for the whole decade that's the only decade that that in, in 60, 70 years, that housing prices kind of held for the long time. Now, yeah. we're in a faster, aggressive, a high digital market that it, it won't do that. It could hold for maybe a year, six months. It's hard to tell. But because we're in a fast-paced uh, market, it, 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 it'll be quicker uh, like housing prices will hold for maybe six months, eight months, nine months, and bang, it's going to kick off again. So you almost have to make a quick decision on whether you're going to, whether you're buying or you're selling or whatever, whatever you're doing. It, it just, you just got to find the right moment. To me, we'll see what February, March brings uh, in 2024. I've always said February, March is always the time to put your house up for sale, but is that going to still go going for 2024 because in the last 25 years it's been pretty good so we'll see if it's going to be yeah. good in 2024 you want to sell your house or you want to uh put your mark uh, house on the market you got to call the number one remax team in canada that is the golfy team 905-575-7700 online at robgolfy.com that's rob g-o-l-f-i.com if you're buying or selling the golfy team is the team to call let's talk a little bit about land transfer tax because the city of toronto in particular we know that they have a hefty municipal land transfer tax they are in well let's just call it budget hell they have some really serious financial uh problems to deal with and the new mayor there olivia chow is having to deal with them and is you know has her hand out asking for uh, money from the province and maybe even the federal government who knows but it, when it comes to the land transfer tax in toronto which is already sky high there is a discussion that maybe we should increase that even a little bit more or a lot more. I'm not sure what the number is eventually going to be. Is this a deterrence to those who buy and sell homes? I would have believed it would be. It, it is. It slows it slows the buyer down. Like, I mean, I know they got uh, uh, rebates or, or discounts for first-time buyers, but anybody else, it, like, you know, like, for instance, a million-dollar house, which, which in uh, – in a million dollar house in Toronto, which is probably average, actually one point one million dollars in, in Toronto. So, but a million dollar house in Toronto. Sorry, in, in Toronto, the land transfer tax is uh, thirty seven thousand nine hundred and fifty. It's crazy. So, not only you have to wow. save money to buy the down for the down payment, you got to have the land transfer tax. It's almost forty thousand dollars. Then you got your legal fees. So, so literally, you have to have forty thousand dollars. Put aside on top of what your down payment has to be. Now, that's in, that's in the GTA, right? They doubled the land transfer tax. I can't remember what year they did that. Now, in Hamilton, Burlington, and, and Niagara, and Brantford, everywhere, the rest of uh, Ontario, a $1 million house, the land transfer tax would be $16,475. Except for first-time buyers, they get uh, a discounted rate. Now, in 2015... The Wynn government, remember the Wynn government, tried to do have the rest of Ontario have the land transfer tax double for everywhere else. So think about hmm. like, like, like Toronto did that because they were deep in debt. They needed to get money 
to pay for all their screw ups of management of that city but they haven't changed it and it's not even paying anything it's like it like it's now it's a normal land transfer tax in toronto now they tried to bring it in there was a lot of uh uh, uh kickback and a lot of uh, uh about them doing that they were gonna hurt they, they would have hurt the economy uh, i think for a short bit in ontario but it would take longer for somebody to save money to buy a house, especially in like Niagara, Brantford, Kitchener, Waterloo, just anywhere outside of the GTA. I mean, Toronto, if you live in Toronto, you're probably making more money, but still it, it offset, it, it balances out. But, um, I like, I, I, I got a feeling they're going to try to uh, uh, increase it. And, and I don't, you know, cause they're always, they're, they're always in trouble. They always need money, but I hope they don't. The land transfer tax is very expensive. And they're making a fortune, the Ontario government, uh, or, and the cities that they have, they have them in. And uh, I just, uh, I just, I just think it's, uh, I think it's just too much. And I think wasn't it in two thousand eight when they implemented it? I think the land transfer tax was only three hundred and seventy nine dollars, if I'm correct. <laughs> That's wow. it. So when they started this, and look at where it's at now, it's in like it's it's like you know like um, on a million dollar house, it's like sixteen uh, sixteen seventeen thousand. That's outside of the GTA. In the GTA, it's almost it's almost forty thousand. Well, here's here's a little bit of uh, other stats that'll that'll blow your mind. As of twenty twenty one, and this is according to the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, Toronto home prices have increased by about one hundred forty percent since two thousand eight. So since the municipal land transfer tax was introduced in two thousand eight, home prices on average in Toronto went up one hundred forty percent. The municipal land transfer tax has gone up three hundred forty percent, more than double that. Yeah of the price of the average house that is insane it is and they just keep taxing and taxing you know uh, it's just it's, it's just getting ridiculous no matter where you're going we're paying tax over tax over tax and they're gonna i don't know how long they're gonna keep doing this like don't these politicians have to uh, pay taxes also don't they have to <laughs> go don't they buy gas don't they buy groceries like is it do they get yeah. that all paid for from the government like is do they have like a like a credit card that uh you know the federal or the you know uh canada gives them says hey you guys are exempt from all these uh things we'll pay the taxes for you since you're uh, you know uh being a, a representative of uh canada or whatever you're but it's just it's 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 ridiculous how much we're taxed and um yeah and, and they just keep doing it they just keep pushing on you know but they're starting to get pushback though you know there's people out there over bridges and corners and everything <laughs> putting putting their flags out saying you know we got to stop this and stop that but uh, it's happening it's starting to happen and canada never did that before we really never had protesters or i'm not sure if you call them protesters but they're people out there just acknowledging that yeah. they're not happy yeah i think it's just regular regular people now you know fed up at the cost of living it's gone way too high we pay too much tax on too many items and i think we're all either at or very close to that breaking point yeah. so it's it's no surprise that people are really angry about it but let's move on to because and you kind of referenced this earlier on you know if you if you have you know an interest rate that you're looking at and thinking okay i'm not sure if that number is going to work for me just imagine having your mortgage coming up for renewal this year and you were locked in at a five-year you know, fixed term, which was at, you know, two, two and a half, three percent. And now you're looking at six, six and a half, seven percent in some cases. That sticker shock, I, I would assume, is going to, you know, really uh, force a lot of people to, you know, take note of whether or not they want to continue with the home ownership. Can they afford to continue paying mortgage payments at a much higher rate? Uh, have you heard about these conversations being had with people who are thinking of buying or selling yeah they are i i uh, we are getting people that are um debating what to do and uh they're in a frustrating uh, situation and 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 it's and it's becoming very stressful as we as time is going on renewals are happening as, and it's, and there's and i think uh, i'm not sure what percentage of the renewals i think 30 percent of the renewals are happening next year so we're going to see a lot of people trying to figure out what to do so they can keep their house. I'd hate to see anybody sell their house that, uh, you know, if their mortgage uh, rates, uh, you know, increase to a point where they just can't afford it. Like there's a lot of families. I mean, there's people that are home on uh, on maternity leave, right? So you're only getting so much money for that maternity 
maternity leave uh, from unemployment and it's not paying the full salary that where you're used to, uh, then you got the husband, you know, or wife or whatever that's working. And so you got maternity leave and you got one, uh, you got one and a half income, let's say. So, and if the renewal comes up, they're in trouble. They're, they're in trouble. They're, they're going to be under like, every month goes by they're getting more and more in debt you know and they probably have to dip into their line of credit they have to you know borrow money or whatever but i i feel i feel for those people uh shop around for a rate you know talk to mortgage brokers we, like like for instance i wish sam and or sam or uh brian were here um and that, that can talk about this I, it was too late for me to to get them to to come but but shop around for a rate, you know, like call us, we can connect you with, uh, we got two mortgage brokers on our, on our team and they will shop the rate around for you and they'll find it. And, and, and one last thing though, is when, when they are shopping the rate for you, um, it's better to get a mortgage broker cause they'll do a credit check on you once. But if you go to five different banks and do five different credit checks, it hurts your beacon score. So you gotta be very careful about that. So find a mortgage broker, he does the credit check, and then he can send the credit check to all those other people that he's shopping for. So it's only done once. But yeah, I would definitely shop around for the renewal, but, uh, but it is gonna be a scary, scary time coming up uh, uh, with a lot of people that are already on the edge uh, now. There are a few reasons not to hire your real estate agent's home inspector. I, I did not know this was a big no-no, but apparently it is. Rob, what can you tell us about Yeah, that? you know, the, it, it, is, it is tough. So here, here's the thing about inspectors. And what they do is they want to do a good job for the realtor because they want, they want that realtor to use them again. And, and mm -hmm. so there's, a, you know, so they're, they're going to push the, the deal and not make it as bad as it is. So sometimes it's good to hire somebody that maybe you went on your own or have the realtor give three or four inspectors that, that maybe they use, they don't use or whatever. Um, but don't like, like we, we had a meeting just, um, this past week and said, guys, we, we, like we work in the Hamilton, Niagara, Brantford and Halton area. And I said, you have to have a list of at le between all those areas, 10 home inspectors that, that you feel that have good reputations and they do a good mm -hmm. job. Do not refer just one because what happens is that homeowner and inspectors, all of them will miss something. They can't, they can't tell what's behind the walls of a house. You just can't. But the one thing about that is if you, here's 10 that we felt that had good reputations, good reviews were good. Um, and, and they, uh, they know, uh, pretty well what a, building construction is let them pick who it is let them try to find out what the best price for them is so that they can't come back to you and say hey you referred this guy to me and he wasn't competent right. he missed this he missed that so we had a meeting about that with uh with our team and say guys uh you know i know you're referring three but i think you have to you have to just give them a sheet of paper here's 10 and and they're all in the surrounding area and you and, and one can it doesn't matter um it it's the best way um, for the, for the buyer. And, uh, and, and it's, and, and I think, yeah, it, it's the only way I think you have to do it. Uh, you can't have just one. If a realtor refers you just one guy, do not use that guy. Do not use that yeah. guy. Cause he wants to please the realtor. And, and that's not what you want. You're buying one of the most, ex, uh, expensive investments in your life. And you want to make sure it's going to be good for you, uh, when you're buying it again, but also inspectors do miss things. The best of the best because we don't know what's behind the walls and that's and and what happens is if something happens and you only referred to one they're going to go back to the to the realtor say hey you referred this guy to me and so then now you got he pointing fingers everywhere so that's why you always say here's five or ten of them you decide i have no re relationship we these guys have done inspections all over the uh the peninsula or the hamilton went halton area and we've seen their name around. They, uh, they seem to be, have good reputations. You pick one. And that's the only way and the best way. Have you ever run into a scenario where the buyer has a home inspection done, but they're not 100% satisfied? And they said, you know what? Let's bring in another home inspector to see what they find. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes you bring a, a, a contractor um, to find out more about a certain part of the house. Like it could be, uh, you know, the attic, uh, finding out about the raptors, maybe because they're bullying, something's going on up there, you don't know. Um, maybe uh, the foundation. Uh, we have one house that, uh, that uh, 
the, the wall is bowing in. And uh, so the we're going to mention that to whoever buys it. We're, we're going to say, listen, we got to make sure we don't want we don't want a buyer to miss it. We want to make sure we don't want to make sure an agent doesn't miss it. We want to make sure everybody knows there's a bow in the wall. It's and we got an estimate to fix it. It's fifteen thousand dollars. So and here's the company that can do it. So so we're going to list it based on this wall needing to be done. Now somebody may buy it and not do anything. And uh, but but we are going to make sure that that is picked. Now most inspectors will pick that out. And and how long that bow in the wall has been there? It's hard to tell because those things kind of happen slowly over a long period of time. But, uh, but yeah, but inspectors do miss. I had one where there was mold behind a basement wall, and the homeowners didn't even know it. The inspector didn't see it, and, uh, and, the, and the sellers, I'm sorry, and the buyers, when they ripped out the basement, there was mold all behind the walls. So are they, who's liable for this? I mean, like the, 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 the buyers think the sellers were trying to hide something. The, then the buyers think the home inspector was incompetent. And it's just like, like you, can't, you can't see what's behind the walls, and that's the thing. And, and it's, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, let's get into this story, and this is a very, very interesting one. We know that rental prices really everywhere are kind of through the roof. In Toronto especially, that is definitely the case. And there was a landlord who has listed a, uh, I was going to call it a room. It's not really, well, it is a room, but there is a listing for a bed in this room on Kijiji, and it lists a, a, as a Toronto you know, apartment listing for $550 a month. The thing, well, there's two things to it. Number one, yes, it's just a bed in a room. You're sharing this room with somebody else. And it's not really in Toronto. It's 45 minutes away in Ajax. Uh, Rob, this this is an eyebrow raiser, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So this guy, I guess he's got it listed. He goes, I'm willing to share my bed, right? And uh, uh, it, I, 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 I couldn't believe it when I, I saw it. There, there's an article in the paper. So, But I don't know. Do you, like, describe what you want in, in the bed beside, <laughs> beside you? Like, like, is it that bad? Is that that bad? Like, I mean, this guy, he's, re- he's renting his, one half of his bed. Like, like his probably queen size or king size bed for five hundred and fifty dollars a month. So basically, he's sleeping with a stranger. Like, does he post like I'm looking for a tall, blonde, athletic, professional? I don't know. Like, what's he? What's yeah. the? What's he? What's he look like? What's the person looking for? And uh, but is it gotten to that point where people are renting everything? I mean, we've heard people renting their backyard, you know, the pool and everything else like that for by by the hour. Uh, people are renting rooms out in their house. People are rent. People are renting everything. Like it's, but it's 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 crazy. And and they're I guess they're making money. Like a, a, it, it's almost like a, a combination of a dating site or or, or prostitution <laughs> or or whatever it is. I don't know. Like it's it's uh it's 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 crazy. Like you know, can you imagine you said to uh, to your wife uh, Rick and said, hey. Listen, uh, we got somebody else joining us in our bed tonight. I uh, hope you don't mind. Uh, we're gonna make about five hundred bucks, five hundred fifty bucks this month to help pay for uh, the, uh, the groceries. <laughs> Can you imagine it that? Wild. It's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. People do that, anything. People that conversation do. would end pretty quickly. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, we you hear so many different things. I know it's crazy. Yeah. Last one uh, for our audience today, and this is an exciting event that's coming up on Wednesday, October the 4th at the Burlington Arts Center. Uh, It's the Win in Any Market event. What is happening? So this is mostly uh, for realtors, but we also have an investment thing, and it's about a two, two-and-a-half-hour segment. It's at the Burlington uh, uh, Arts Center. Uh, it's from 10 till noon. Registration starts at uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, we do have food and drinks after that. It's all free. Uh, but if you go to winininanymarketevent.com, it's mostly for realtors, but if investors want to check it out and see it, um, it, 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 we put this on probably two or three times a year. And what it is, we show realtors how to win it in in a, a market that we're in uh we show uh them how to invest uh, what to invest with how to deal with uh investors and how to invest themselves and we got one of the top top uh social media uh, uh people in real estate um her name uh, yeah uh, uh, she's unbe- uh, unbelievable she's from montreal and uh, she's going to be there. She's going to, she's our, uh, I guess we you call it anchor or our, uh, our, our big host. She's going to be speaking first. She's got 2.8 to 3 million followers 
on TikTok and Instagram, and mm-hmm. she is she is a thunder. I'm telling you. So if you're a realtor listening, you got to come to this event. Uh, you'll like it. Uh, just look us up. Uh, at, uh, you can call us, Rob, call us, robgolfie.com, uh, or just go to winninanymarketevent.com.